Hi everybody. So one of the things that probably isn't readily appreciated is I work on things all of the time. The reason you don't see them as videos because can you imagine how dull it would be with the, oh here's another rotor but this time it's slightly pink on this section here. Try to do things where there's something interesting to report and I was thinking about the efficiency of this rotor that we're planning on putting in the Darwin wind turbine and I thought how do we measure that efficiency which is of course oh I went into all the stuff about how to calculate because I was thinking well a direct energy to energy that would be kind of good can we get to kinetic energy in the wind and then kinetic energy that we're measuring so what I've got here is the blowtorch the blowtorch is pretty cool but what it actually represents more than anything is just a flywheel if I pop that bit out there then we have ourselves a flywheel that weighs about 183 grams. Flywheel kinetic energy is really, really easy to calculate. So if I put this together, says he. <laughs> Oops, there we go. Put it back together, stick my rotor on there, and then get that turning. What I've got is a flywheel system where I can store and measure the kinetic energy. So let's put together an experimental setup to do exactly that. Okay, so here's our setup. What I've got here is a fan blower. Now that fan blower takes a little bit of time to get to speed, but when it's up to speed, it'll blow out a column of air at about 2.4 meters per second. And I know that because I read it on an anemometer. And I put the anemometer right there to read that wind speed. So it's a little faster than the wind that's hitting here, but not enough to make much of a difference. We'll give it 10 seconds, so um, we'll hold on to that, start that, let it get up to speed, set the timer going, let go, 10 seconds, and then we'll take a speed reading, an RPM reading of the flywheel using a laser tachometer. It's got a little reflective strip on the back so that we can do that, and that'll give us an RPM after 10 seconds of this wind blowing at it. Now the idea of 10 seconds is important, 2.4 meters per second is important, and we'll get a reading out of this. So, let's set the whole thing going. We go, 653. So the amount of energy stored in a flywheel is half the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. If you can't come with that, then there's plenty of online calculators like this one. This one's really easy. We just put in the mass of the flywheel, which is 183 grams, and then the diameter, which is 150 millimeters. And then we can put in the RPM figure that we just got, press calculate, and we get the number of joules stored, which turns out to be 1.2. Okay, so we stored 1.2 joules in our flywheel. Big whoop, how much energy was actually coming out? Well, this is why we did video 1921, because we can work out what the kinetic energy of the wind was. In fact, all kinetic energy is a half mv squared, which is half the mass times the speed the mass is traveling at. Now, what we really need to know is the mass of the air that we're hitting it with, which is why the 10 seconds was important. If we take a speed at 2.4 meters and hit it for 10 seconds, it's equivalent to having having a column 24 meters deep. So we've got this column 24 meters deep and we know the area because it's the area here. We know what the mass of the air is because the density is 1.22 and that's equivalent with hitting that with about 1.5 joules. So we hit 1.5 joules and we stored 1.2 joules. Anybody interested in percentages? That's 80% of the wind energy we stored as rotational energy in the flywheel. So we were able to capture 80% of the kinetic energy of the wind. That's more than the BETS limit. The BETS limit is 59.3%. We got 80%. Okay, there is some argument that that was with the fan inside, so I've brought it out and I've stuck it on the car in a real-world condition. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Looks like it'll spin in real world. That's awesome. So, I have 
first sight, looks like we've created a rotor that will beat the Betzel in it, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Now, that is first sight because there's a lot of things that could go wrong. I mean, one thing is my measurement error might have been horrendous. Equally, I could just be as mad as a bag of kittens. I don't really know. But I have done this in Tinkercad. I've made it publicly available. The link is in the description. So if anybody wants to print off this rotor and do some testing themselves, then, you know, that will be brilliant brilliant and we can actually see if this is a pile of nonsense or it is as efficient as it would first appear to be. And that certainly is what's going in the Darwin wind turbine anyway. Now there's a couple of things I've done to this. I've reduced the height of this to only a centimetre and I was thinking of reducing it even further because the idea obviously when a um, wind turbine turns, the only bit that gets hit by the wind is the blade. And of course, the rest of it, the wind is just going past it. I mean, that tip speed ratio does come in here. Remember, if the tip speed ratio is about six, the tip speed ratio represents the speed of the blade in relation to the speed of the wind. It's hitting about six times the amount of wind. But with a wind turbine, if it were a solid disc, it would block it completely. This one works really well if it's a solid disc because it takes the air, separates it in a flow, probably with uh, sticks to it like a coander effect, blasts it out of these little angled bits here which are what are shoving it around. So there is no wasted wind in the same way that there is a wind turbine and something like a tip speed ratio probably doesn't have much relevance, although I guess it might do here, but interesting rotor. Available for anybody who wants it. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Oh, and please do remember to like and subscribe.